Hello everyone and welcome back. We are here for more F1 2013 career mode. We are going to the next race, which is at the Boo the Bud the Bud the Bud International Circuit in India. We are four races, including this one. We are four races away from the finish. So uh, let's just uh, jump into it here real quick. Let's go to the session. All right, yeah, the Bud International Circuit. I think it's Bud. I think that's how it's pronounced. It's not Bud. I know that. All right, we're gonna go one tick down on the setup, and we're gonna have at it. Around the last corner. Here we go down the front straight away. Why am I in this view? Nope, I want that. I want that view right there. Thank you very much. Can always seem to get him around the first turn there. Remember, slow it. Slow it down nice and easy for this turn. Hard on the DRS, get back up to speed. Or hard on the curves, get back up to speed, then hit the DRS. I uh, broke a, started breaking a little too soon there, but I think we, I think we should be good. Let off, coast around here. Don't get on the gas too soon, even though it says not to break. Don't, not heavy on the gas. Get in, get in early there. Wind it out. Come back to the inside. Your full throttle around that turn there. Coast it around there. Cut that one short. Give it a boost of curves up the hill. Slow it down. You can get up on the curb there as much as you like, pretty much. Just don't get on the, the higher part of the curb. Slow it down. Around this last corner, this is where you can really make some time on the computers. They're not good around the last turn. Curves DRS gets it to the line. And we got a pole. We got ourselves a poll, ladies, ladies and gentlemen. So, thing I know, I talk, I know, I've talked about this in the last one. The quick uh, qualifying setups is that I like the amount of downforce that they give you with going one tick below the middle, but the um, the balance of the car doesn't feel very good. So that's why you have to go in and you have to change the balance, like. Which I know they're just like, well, just just go um, with the middle. Yeah, but the middle doesn't have enough downforce. So see, we want the wings at seven, but we want the balance to be at six, and we want that to be there. Because if if we go one tick above normal, then the wing angle is at f uh, five, and the balance is at seven. And then these are reversed, where the ride height is the ride heights are five, and the spring stiffnesses are seven. Okay, guys. Where so like the aerodynamics makes it better for a straight line, but it's a little bit more uncontrollable in the turns. Whereas with one tick below, it's fine in the turns because of the aer because of the aerodynamics and stuff like that, and the downforce, but the balance of it coming like around into like the slower turns is not very good downforce helps in high medium to high speed turns so depends on it all depends on what kind of track that you, you're running so uh yeah here we go we're gonna try to uh win us another race here we're going That's right. We uh, I had another race. We had a race at at Japan. It was our next race after after Korea, and in that race, 
I won the championship. Oh, and just like that, right on the outside of both Vettel and Alonzo. And we are off, ladies and gentlemen. Beautiful day here in India. And Vettel already moved up past Alonso. Looks like Hamilton is settled into fifth place right there. Too wide. Uh, little, oh, I'm all over the place. Okay, come on. Come on. Come on. Wheel it. So this, this, this track is among a handful of tracks that are on this game that F1 does not actually race anymore. The other ones that are on this game that I can think of that they don't race at anymore is Malaysia. Um, they don't race at the Nürburgring anymore. Um, they don't race um, here at the the Boot International Circuit. They don't race at the Yongam Circuit in Korea anymore. Um, I think they... I think that... Oh, uh, shoot. See? See, that's... See, that's what I'm talking about. If you don't let off soon enough going around that section, you'll end up like that. This is another track where they made, where Sebastian Vettel is, like, like, un, unusually good. Alrighty. DRS is enabled. Alright, here we go. I don't know why exactly they stopped racing at this track. Um, a lot of times, I think it has to do with just the money. I think that's a main. That's a, uh, I mean, I think that's one of the, one of the major reasons why uh, they stop racing at tracks. You know, the FIA, they have to, you know, the FIA, they have to, like, rent out the track for, for the weekend, and then, there, yeah, they have to make an agreement with, with the people that own the track to use the track for the weekend, and then, uh, depending on how well, like, the ticket sales go, and how many people are in attendance, plus however many people watch it as well, on... TV or uh, other platforms. You know, that affects how, you know, if they... If they eventually, if they inevitably lose money 
over the course of a weekend at a, at a Grand Prix, then that's not a, it's not a, it's not good for the FIA as a business because it is a business, and so I think that leads them to pulling certain tracks and uh, just uh, just uh, being going other places and trying to experiment with maybe some other places that might have more entertaining races. And that's the, that's the that's the main thing with you know any kind of sport like motorsport and stuff like that is like it is entertainment and if the people that are watching the entertainment are not in are not entertained they're not going to watch simple as that right and so if the racing's bad or, you know, pretty much, yeah, if the racing's bad, people aren't going to watch it. And I mean, I'm among those people as well. You know, if a race is bad or if a race is boring, I'm not going to watch it because it's a waste of my time. So. hundreds of a second faster th through that section. Yeah, just a, li just a little over the curb there. No big deal. Another reason I think that might factor into uh, that might factor into not running at a track or something anymore it might also be used uh, from a from a political stance I think might be another reason why um, I don't know like because it'd be how um, how relations go between countries and stuff like that and I think the the FIA I'm pretty sure is based out of England based out of, you know, the, I think it's based out of the UK. So I don't know if, like, their stances with, like, certain countries change over time, and so they're just like, no, we're not going to race there, like, we're not going to. Ooh, crap. Crap, crap, crap. I mean, and it can also be because, I mean, it can also be from the track's point of view, too, where, you know, they, you know, where, you know, a certain track is, you know, saying, hey, we can hold, it's like, hey, we can hold the Grand Prix that same weekend that you normally ran this race, and we won't, uh, we won't, we won't take as much of the profit from the race that this track does. So that can be another thing where it's like the FIA are looking at, you know, potential, you know, pretty much bidders for, you know, race, for for races and for weekends. And if there's a slot that, you know, if they if they feel like they can make a little bit more money hosting a race, you know, having a race in a different, in a different country or a different track, they're going to do it. I mean, it's like where they've, how they've, you know, they raced in Germany for... 
I don't know how many years now, but, uh, you know, they've switched it off and off between, uh, Nürburgring, and then most recent, and then recently they switched, or then they've raced at Hulkenheim, and so, and like, they've gone back and forth year to year, and so, you know, it's all just a matter, I guess it's just a matter of opinion at that point. And then, like, how other countries have ran, you know, Grand Prix for years there, but they've went to different tracks throughout the years. And uh, my tires are really, are really getting crappy here, I think. Oh, I was going to open the door and let Veto pass us, but I don't think he wants to. Oh, shoot. I was unaware of Pit Road there. Well, it's like um, the United States Grand Prix used to be held at the Brickyard. But then they made... Uh, they constructed a track down in Texas called the Circuit of the Americas. Which they've been racing on since 2013. Got the same kind of tires on our car, so. Well, I have. Will I have DRS? I do. Let's go, boys. Getting DRS and a draft off of our teammate really is going to help. Really is going to help our our time through through that section there. Took it up to 190 miles an hour. Uh, yeah, because I just pitted and they they're still on the same tires. Woo, woo, woo! Oh, 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 oh that one off there. He was just in the pits. He's not on full reds, I, I can guarantee you that. So, another thing, this isn't about the, the courses or the money or anything like that. But, another thing that I'd like to point out here is the difference, I mean obviously there's a difference, but the differences between F1 cars and NASCARs. First of all, one of the one of the most one of the I guess you could say age old questions, but it's not really age old, but one of the most common questions and one of the most you know most comparison with the two cars is which one is faster. You currently have a three second gap between you and the car behind. Three seconds. Yeah, which which one is faster? A NASCAR or an F1 car? Well the answer, quite shockingly, is that they are roughly about they're roughly about the same. If we're if we're going strictly off of top speed, okay. We're going strictly off of top speed. They can they pull about the same top speed. Because if you if you look down this straightaway here, 
when I get to the end of it, I'm going to be close to about 180 miles an hour. Yeah, I got I got exactly to 180 miles an hour before I had to turn. Now you're saying, well, you weren't able to accelerate all the way. Um, I was pretty much at the top of seventh gear right there, which is the highest gear that this variety of F1 car has. Now the newer F1 cars have eight gears. However, they are, but they are also V6 engines. This is a V10 engine in the cars this year. So they were able to pull, they were able to pull a lot more power. And I cut the corner, but don't mind me. However, NASCARs now at this point in the game, this state, this stage of the game for NASCAR, their top speed is also right about right around 180, 190 miles an hour. In fact, I think they, I think they can get up to about 190 plus. Some tracks like Atlanta or Texas and stuff like that going in the going in the first turn without restrictor plates because of how how high banked the tracks are. They're able to keep the speed up through the turns and then carry it down the long front straightaways. Getting in, getting into the turn close at about 190 miles an hour. Now restrictor plate races where they don't have to break around the track because they're going at good enough speed and the track is banked enough and it's lo large enough. Oftentimes they they have restrictor plates they have restrictor plates though on those races. They have restrictor plates on those races which restrict their speed. I'm trying to tell I'm trying to Throw out some information here, engineer, and you're ruining it. So maybe Vettel is running reds because he's catching me. He's catching me at a steady, a steady pace. Or I'm just kind of not not running full out, just kind of half half going it here. But anyway. They oftentimes run just a tad bit slower, at like Daytona and Talladega, because of the restrictor plates. But they can average, they can go up to about 180, 190 miles an hour. So, if we're going strictly off of, if we're going strictly off of top speed, here, ladies and gentlemen, NASCARs and F1 cars can are roughly about the same, you know, straight line or uh, you know top speed wise now the big difference that the big the big difference where it comes into play for lap times and stuff like that is first of all f1 cars are a lot quicker f1 cars are a lot quicker they have a lot higher they have a lot more acceleration and i think they even I don't know. I think they might generate more torque as well. I'm not quite sure about that. They also they are a lot lighter than NASCARs and so they have a lot more a lot better handling than NASCARs as well. So that's why they're able to go around they're able to go around a, a track with with several turns a, a, a flat track with several turns at a faster speed than a NASCAR or should I say a road course I think the biggest problem with um, or I'd say, like, F1 cars generate so much downforce. Fuel management has been excellent this race. Great job. I keep going off the track a 
little by little. F1 cars generate so much downforce that they could um, actually drive upside down if they were going if they were going full speed. I think that's what in inevitably like slows them down. And there's something there's there's a word there's a word for. There's a word for it. I can't think of the word. Or it's basically it's the fastest speed that a vehicle or something can achieve. Um, like due to the way it's aerodynamically designed. So like because of because of the aerodynamics, it can't go any faster. Like even though like you know some you know, a car or something of similar weight and, you know, engine power and all that stuff, you know, might be able to go a little bit faster. It's because of the aerodynamics that it, it's not able to go any faster. I think that might be a little bit of the problem with the F1 car when it comes to the top speed. Because it's so light and generates so much downforce that it slows down the car that way more. I think that might be what hinders it in a straight line. However, so back to the back to the uh, the driving upside down part. That's an interesting. Uh, that is an interesting thing, right? So the way that that works is yes, cars. Oh shoot. We're gonna pit. Jeez, dude. See, this is what happened last time at Korea. Vettel was able to get away from us. But I'm saving my fuel. I'm going to, engineer. Would you just be quiet so I can talk? I know what I'm doing. Here we go. I was good through pit road that time. Let's see, what I'm going to do is save fuel now. That way I don't have to save fuel later. And then I can run battle back down. So, with um, the aerodynamics, the way that the cars are, when they... So, you know, it's all, it's all, it's all physics. When the car goes... Oh my gosh. The engineer is so annoying. No, not no. I don't. I don't want rich. I want stem. So what happens is when the car goes through the air. The way that the wing is the wing the way that the car is designed and like with the wing that it has on, on the back, it creates downforce. Which, because of physics, the wind going over the wing pushes the fin down, or it pushes the air up. Which, because of the uh, first law of motion, being that. Or not the first law of motion, the second law of motion? Everything has an, er, every action has an equal or opposite reaction. Oh look, we found a way past. How convenient. <laughs> but anyway, so what happens is when the air goes over the top, when it, the air goes over the fin, the air gets, the air gets swooped up. And because of the force of it going up, that that inevitably puts a opposite force pushing down on the fin, which pushes down on the car, the back of the car, and the tires. Would you shut up, engineer? So 
so then it, it, it would push the car it pushes the car into the ground keeping it on the ground now because it generates and now how, how can this run upside down well guess what if you, when you're running upside down okay V you know the air is still the air would still be rushing over the car so you will be creating force of the air but now you're, since you're upside down the air is getting pushed down the air will be getting pushed down toward the ground and and then your car will be being pushed up into the surface the only problem is and the only thing that's wrong with this is gravity right well this is this is how it works is that the downforce it creates creates enough force to overcome the force of gravity over the car being able to keep it upside down and I did not mean to bump that on there we're gonna try come on Come on, Vettel, get in front of me. What was your problem, dude? We're I want to. I want to get past Vettel cleanly. I didn't mean to hit him. I wanted to have DRS. Okay, Vettel, you're going. Way slower than I expected through there. He put on another pair of option tires, or another uh, pair of prime tires. Vandergaard! He's just so much faster through that little section right there. I think what I'm gonna what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to I'm, I'm gonna have to get him in I'm gonna have to get him into turn three. I'm gonna have to get him. I'm gonna have to get him in turn three. The hairpin before the straightaway. Apparently, the stewards didn't mind me exceeding the limits of the track there. I say that I'm going to get him and I'm blowing it like a running running all crappy here although that lap was faster than my last lap technically Stay in the draft, boy. Stay in the draft. Get DRS. He's just so much. He's so much faster down the straightaway. I don't know how. I mean, I know how because I have more arrow than he does, but still.
Well, I need to eat. Now is our chance because he's in fuel conservation mode. Oh, around the outside, get the DRS. That was the fastest, that was the fastest lap of the race right there. Around the outside, easy peasy, son. I don't think he's. I don't think he's close enough for DRS. I gotta pit one more time, so I'm, it looks like I'm planning on pitting at lap 23. So here we go. When's Vettel gonna pit next? That's what I wanna know. So I think Vettel might be. Is he back within a second? Aw, oh, just over a second. I think Vettel might. I think Vettel might be out of fuel conservation mode now. But if I can. I think I might be too far away to get DRS off this guy. Yeah, dang it. Dang it, dang it, dang it. Bianchi. Let me through, boy. Woo, let's go. Already, already got a two second lead on him. Yep. Oh, don't mind me. That man, the stewards are really lenient with that turn, apparently. With that, with that whole section, I think, because I've exceeded the limits of the track on the one part, then I cut the corner on on the other on the other turn. DRS, nope. Use use a little bit of a uh, a little bit of the draft that I could there. Okay, Vettel came in and pitted, so. So those of you wondering the information on the side that I have up here, the top, like I said, the like I mentioned before, the top number is how much fuel to the good that I have right now. So I am plus one lap of fuel right now. So that means I'll have, I will be able to finish the race. Uh, standard normal is the fuel mix that I am running right now. Um, so I'm running in the standard mix, which means my lap should be normal. Um, if I switch down to uh, lean mix, it will say lean, and it will say slower. And if I just go up to rich mix, it will say rich, and then it will say faster. But uh, normal mix is right in the middle, and it's it has you know it has good 
It's a, it's a good mix. It's a good middle ground. Because rich mix, you run faster lap times, but you use more fuel. Lean mix, you use less fuel, but you run slower. So, of course, you know, the middle is normal, and it, you run decent lap times while also running a decent amount, decent amount of fuel. Uh, the third column there, it says lap 23 stop. That tells me that I'm scheduled to stop on lap 23. Seeing as it is lap 23 now, the pit stop uh, indicator came up above all of the above the whole thing there. Telling me to pit this lap, pit this lap, pit this lap. Um, then we have at the bottom, it says rejoin first. That is an estimation of when I go into the pits, what position I will rejoin the track in. So if I come in and pit now, it's saying that when I rejoin the track, I will still be in first place. That's why it, that's why it was uh, bouncing all over the place saying, you know, fourth through, it was saying like, Fifth through six, fourth through six, and all, all that jazz. Now it's saying sixth place, third place, fifth, sixth. We shall see. I have an 11 second lead over. Alonzo, and I think Alonzo already pitted, so we should see. We'll see how this works. Oh, no, Alonzo. Nope, Alonzo already pitted, so. Or no, Alonzo's pitting right now. I think that was Massa that went by. Alright, I'm, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna switch down to lean mix, because my fuel went back to optimal. So, uh, yeah, we'll see. So I'm running. So I'm running slower lap time is based on fuel, but I have the faster tire, so they should equal out. Oh, now I'm up. Now I'm back up to mix one, or now I'm back up to plus one lap. We're gonna finish lap 25, and then we're gonna go back up to standard mode. Standard mix. I think that should be enough to get us to get us to the end here. Oops. Surprised they at least surprised they didn't give me a warning for that for that one there because they're pretty they're pretty strict through that section, but they're pretty lenient through this one apparently. So I think Masa is on a similar strategy to me, so I think he should be coming into pit here soon. Yep, he's coming into pit. Alrighty, sweet. Like I said, I'm going to complete lap 25 and then switch back to standard mix. See, and Vettel is having to save fuel as well, so... Dang, Perez is in fourth. Good job, Perez. Excuse me. So... This is not one of my favorite tracks. I have a lot of, uh, <laughs> there's a lot of tracks on here that kind of fall into this like middle ground territory. Cause it's like, I know dude. Cause like my favorite tracks, I have my favorite tracks, which are Bahrain, Malaysia, Canada, um, Spa, Monza, and uh, yeah, 
Spawn Monza. There's an, another one that I'm. It's another one that I feel like I'm missing, but I don't know. Yeah, those are like my favorite tracks. I guess Great Britain is kind of up there, and Silverstone is kind of good. Or Silverstone's pretty good. But then there's a lot of tracks that are kind of in this like middle ground territory where it's like I don't hate them, but I don't really like love them a whole lot. And that's like that's tracks like Melbourne and Hungary and Circuit of, in, te in Texas. Uh, Young Gam was one of them. This one's one of them. Um, the Asmarina Circuit in Abu Dhabi is one of them as well. Uh, Sao Paulo is also another one on here. Um, and then there's the Nurburgring is also one of them as well. So, you know, there, there's a lot of tracks that are just kind of like, eh, they're, you know, they're alright. And there's the tracks that I absolutely, there's the tracks that I hate. And that's Monaco and Singapore. Because number one, they're street circuits, so they suck absolute booty. And number two, they're just like unnecessarily hard. They're unnecessarily hard, and the thing is, let me let me re let me read you from memory, or let me tell you from memory what I heard about the Santa Monica circuit in uh, in Monaco, not not Santa Monica, the Monte Carlo circuit in Monaco. My bad. Oh, dang, Alonzo beat, beat my fastest lap there. Is that according to current FIA and Formula One safety uh, measures and sa safety standards, the, Mo the Monaco track does not abide by those safety standards, signifying that the track is technically too dangerous to race on in today's standards but they still race on it why because it's already part of the f1 calendar they're like dude bro are you are you serious right now like so you're saying that this track the track is too dangerous according to safety nowadays but you're still racing on just because, oh, you know, nostalgia, oh, you know, reasons, you know, it's, you know, basically it's nostalgia, basically it's location, it's, you know, it's location, it's heritage, it's, you know, all that jazz. Don't mind, you know, it not being safe. And don't get me wrong, it is a beautiful place to race. But it is ungodly hard and I think overly complicated. And like, and like I said, look, with it being a street circuit, it is ungodly bumpy through there. It is ungodly bumpy. There are, I think, in my opinion, unneeded, like, chicanes and stuff in there, but are in there for safety reasons, technically, because it keeps the speed of the cars down because it keeps the speeds of the cars down Santa Monica or Santa, I always say Monte Carlo and Mo Monaco technically has no I mean they have a front stretch technically but it is the worst front stretch imaginable
So the front straightaway, what we have to do is the how you get on it is convoluted, first of all, because the way that you turn, you make a right hand turn, but you you kind of turn too far to get onto the straightaway. So you got to turn it back to the left a little bit to get onto the straightaway. So you're already not, so it's already not straight. Then secondly, it curves slightly to the right all the way through. So it's not a straight away. It's not a straight way like the name entails. We have a six second gap over the car behind. Come on. One thing that is interesting, one thing that I do really like about Monaco is the elevation changes that are that are in the track. Because as you make the first right turn in Monaco, you go up a hill, a really bumpy hill, in between the guardrail and buildings. And it's just, it's just ridiculous. Now, technically, Singapore is also, a, Singapore is also a street circuit. And I found out recently that also Melbourne Park in Australia and Canada are both technically street circuits as well. And if you don't know what the difference is, uh, street circuits are where the F where FIA Formula One take a they've taken a section of uh, public road actually it's a section of public road and they have converted it into a racetrack. So pretty much, pretty much. Every other 51 so weekends of the year, where, where they race at is is used for public use as as a road, as or a series of roads because it's not just one road. Sometimes they, you know, they're several roads. So naturally, being in use, probably 360, you know, probably 361 other days of the year, the thing can get kind of torn up and bumpy. However, I th it looks like a lot of the countries, you know, they work on the they work on the tracks, keep them in suitable conditions for when F1 comes into town so that way they don't have to do too much maintenance on the on the tracks but still I just think it's stupid to have street circuits when there are how many you know legitimately legitimate legitimate full-fledged race tracks throughout the world great drive great drive you dominated the whole weekend pole in the race win fantastic thank you sir Thank you, Sire. Dang, I did really well with Toro Rosso. I'm just realizing it because I still have more points as Toro Rosso than I do um, Sauber. Also, how do I have... I have 339, but if you add up those points, that doesn't add to the, up to 339. Oh, because... Oh, because Hulkenberg... Hulkenberg scored some points for Sauber before he left. Sorry. Yeah, I win again. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Woo-woo! And don't worry, we're going to have Surprise Vettel about... Yep, yeah, there he is. Surprise Vettel, every single time. I'm just kidding. It's, it's whoever finishes in second. They come out of nowhere for, 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 the, for the shot. A source close to the Formula 1 driver, Andrew Cox, has suggested that he is already thinking of next year's drive. The source stated that negotiations were already taking place to ensure that Andrew has a drive for next season. Is that true? I got contract offers from people. I have a contract offer from Mercedes AMG. 
Oh, yeah. Andrew, I've spent the last hour on the phone to Ross Braun. He really wants you to join them at Mercedes. AMG is the number two driver in their team. As soon as as soon as soon I had put the phone down to them, a contract was faxed through. So they are pretty enthusiastic to get you signed up as quickly as possible. They are a great team to drive for, so this would be a positive move for us next season. Have a think about it and get back to me by Sao Paulo. Otherwise, they may sign another driver. Regards, Sub. Sabine. Sabine. I have great news from you. Do you want to renew your contract? Yes, I do. However, well, I want to finish out the season with Sauber, but I will. I will. Uh, I will. Sl I, uh. I don't know. If I could. If I could have Hulkenberg. If I could have Hulkenberg. As my teammate instead of Gutierrez, I'd, I'd do it. Well done at winning your 12th race of the season at New Delhi. The tension was really mounting in the garage. I don't think I've ever seen so. I've ever seen it in so quiet. Seen it. I can't read. Seen it so quiet in the last few laps of the race. But you didn't disappoint and you drove a fantastic race. Well done. Well done. I think. Being the number two driver means I replace Lewis Hamilton instead of Nico Rosberg. So that that would be who I'd want to... Yeah, I think I'm going to finish out the rest of the season with Sauber. I don't know. I don't know if I'll drive for Mercedes or not. We'll see. You'll just have to find out, I guess. So, as always, though, peace!